Hi everybody, I'm Z Garcia and today I'm taking a look at a small trick-taking card game called Blend Coffee Lab. I am a fan of trick-taking games and I'm a fan of this company here who has done about four other games or so and I've enjoyed all of them. In fact, one of those was already a trick-taking game, which I quite enjoyed. So I was curious about this one here. They've also got another game which had a coffee theme. So I guess they've brought those two concepts together and made this one here. Now this is one of those games in which winning the trick and then playing the cards simply turns them into a pool of cards and you're then drafting from those. There's been a few of those, but sometimes you have to be careful with that kind of game and that kind of mechanism because it can get a little bit clunky and it sort of loses this uh, concept of trick taking and it becomes more of a card drafting game the trick taking aspect of it taking a back seat does this game manage to avoid that pitfall for me uh, is it interesting is it engaging let's take a look at it So here's everything that comes with the game. You are going to get a pad of scoring sheets. You get the deck of cards, which has four suits in it with numbers going one through 10. You are going to get an aid sheet with some scoring on it. You get these three cards to determine bonuses. And then you also have these two sets of cards used for two or four players. And these over here used for three players. So let's say I'm going to simulate a game with four players here. We are going to just set this aside for a second. We'll come back to the scoring in a bit, as well as the score pad over here. We'll set these three in the middle of the table, and we are going to uh, pick one card randomly from the deck to determine a couple of things at the beginning of the hand. The game is going to be played over three full hands, and at the end of those three hands, we'll determine score and see who the winner is. So we flip one card randomly here, and we are going to take a look at two things on that card. We'll take a look at the color. That determines which side over here is face up. If it's green or blue, it'll be like this. Red or yellow, it would be like that. And you do the same thing for all three cards, okay? So it'll go like so. And then this also over here on the side tells you the strength of this cup of coffee. In this case, three. It's a, a dark roast. So we'll put this bonus into play because that's the one that might get a bonus this round. The other two will be simply be set aside and we won't concern ourselves with those. We'll return this card to the deck after that. We'll shuffle this up and divvy out the cards among all of the players. So for now, I'll just roughly hand out a quarter of the deck to each player just for our demonstration here. You pick a start player, you are ready to begin. Each hand goes like this. The players are going to play a card. The starting player will play a card from their hand. And so, for example, I could play this one in red. And then everyone around the table must play a card and must, if they can, play a color that they have not previously, that, that has not been previously played in this hand. So I played red. This player can play anything but red if they are able to. Now this player must play anything but green, but uh, I'm sorry, red or yellow. And so they could play, for example, this card here. And then lastly, the only color left is blue. This player will play that card there. And that is it. And now we determine who the strongest uh, players are at the table for this hand. Now, because these cards over here are showing the green-blue side, it lets us know right here on the side which card is stronger. In this case, it's one strong, 10 being the weakest. On the other side, it's the opposite of that, 10 strong, one being the weakest. It also tells us how many cards the players are going to be getting. So, in this case, again, weakest is better, or as in, as in lower number is stronger. So this player here has the strongest card at the table. You would ignore color at this point, and they get the one. The two would be the next, and they get this position in scoring, and then the three over here gets this position in scoring. This player gets nothing for this round. And now, utilizing that ranking, the players will take some of these cards and put them in front of themselves to start building these cups of coffee. And so on this side of scoring, again, the green-blue side, First place gets a card, second place gets a card, third place gets a card, there will be one left over. 
on the other side, first place gets two cards and second place gets one. There is no need for this number three on the uh, yellow red side, okay? And then once again, there will be a card left over. That's important because that will determine something in just one second. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, I have number one over here. I'm going to take this card. It could be any of the four played. And I'll put it in front of me and start building this cup of coffee. As you can see, it has one quarter of the image of a cup of coffee. I'll put that right there. Uh, two over there would take, let's say, that one. Three over here could take, uh, let's say, this one. All right, and they'll put that in front of themselves. And now the leftover card determines uh, on which side of these, the, the kind of hand we play next. It is a red card. We flip all of these over to the red side. This can be discarded. And we, once again, arrange these to the side and begin again, starting from whoever took the number one, this player here. So now I want to play strong. That is better, uh, as in higher, okay? And so I'll lead with this card here. And this player would follow that. They will play blue. They cannot play yellow. They can play anything else. In this case, there are two tens. The same number later is better. And so this is winning right now. Uh, this player over here is going to play that card. They have nothing that can beat that 10. So they'll throw away something in the middle, which are usually the weakest cards. Low is good for uh, this side. And high is good, you know, high numbers. So they'll throw away a five. And then this player over here is going to play their own 10. Strongest card at the table right now. And it's in red, so they were able to play it. And so they get the number one spot. This 10 was after this one. It's the second strongest card. And so this player gets that. Again, no need for this one on the yellow red side. And once again, we will draft these cards. Number one spot here gets two of them. And so they will take, uh, they're going to go with, uh, oh, let's take this card here for them and this card here. And they are putting these together again, let me show you here, to put together a cup of coffee. Once they're able to get the whole thing, they will build an entire cup of coffee. Here's the trick. You are going to have to, every cup you make has to have the same strength, the same, uh, you know, if it's a dark roast, if it's a medium roast, or a light roast, all right? So that's one, two, or three coffee beans printed right there on the card. And so this is a legal uh, combination. This here would not be a legal combination as this is a different strength of a roast. And so um, you are trying to put together a full cup. You can do up to three cups, one for each intensity level throughout an entire hand. However, this player is not getting two cards. They're simply getting, uh, I'm sorry, not getting three cards. They're simply getting two. They could take these two here, and then second place, which went over here, this player could take either one of these. They'll take this one, put it right there. Leftover card was green. We are going to flip these over, and we are going to, once again, starting from the player who got the one right here, they will lead the next round. And that continues until the hand is over. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump a little bit, give some of these players some cards, and show you how scoring would work. So at the end of one of the hands, that is one third of the game, this player, and this is a single player's area, has built three cups of coffee. So they've got a strength one, that light roast, they've got over here that medium roast, and here the dark roast. And they only completed, as you can see, one full cup. They've got three cards for this one, a single card for this one. And then you would score. And so the game is played, as I said, over three rounds. For the light cup, this player, we would take a look at this cup over here and give them their score. So, a couple of things. The colors, meaning how many cards make up the cup, all four colors are there, that is 50 points. And then, if there was a roast bonus associated with that cup for this round, that's a 10 point bonus, assuming the cup is complete. And then if they have uh, scale points, which is the same number on the card showing, then they are going to get some bonus points as well. So again, looking at this cup here, 50 points, and there are three twos on it. That's three cards, another 10 points. So this player would get 60 right there under the cup, the light roast cup. 
The second one, the strength two, they have a single card that's one color worth nothing. So this one will not give them any points. And then the strength three, the dark roast over here, they have three cards, three colors, that's 25 points. Two of them are the same skill, same number, that's another five, so they're up to 30, and they would have gotten the 10 point roast bonus if the cup was complete, but it is not. And that's it for this player's score. And you would do that for each player around the table, shuffle all of this up, do it again, and then a third time. At the end of those three scores, those three rounds, then each player is simply going to gain, for their final score, the highest cup that they scored of each kind, one, two, and three strength, but they only get the strongest out of all three. So for example, let's say this player, as we said, let's say they got 60 points for round one in the light roast, then in the second round they got uh, 30, and for the last round, no score at all. Well, for that column, they get 60, which was the strongest one out of the three. And they do the same thing for uh, medium roast, same thing for the dark roast. And then those three uh, highest scores from any of the three rounds, that's your final score for the whole game. And that's it um, for how you play the game. A couple of little variants uh, and, and differences I want to point out. As you probably noticed, the red cups here are a little funny. They show two, um, two cups, and that's because when you play with only three players, there is no yellow suit, and these red cards you simply utilize like so, and you are going to uh, build a cup that has only three cards. In this case, you would a, a full cup would look something like that. All right? And um, some of the cards are also going to have a little symbol, to determine uh, which of which side of these you are playing on from hand to hand. And in fact, you're not even using these. You are using these here for three players. In the two-player variant of the game, you will use largely the same deck. You remove some numbers from it. And the players are going to be dealt a hand of eight cards, as well as six other cards that simply go face down in front of them. They will play out those eight cards from their hand. Once those are gone, They'll pick up the other six, and they will play with those as well. So it's similar to the four-player game. And that's pretty much everything. From round to round, you will once again, as I said, shuffle. You will once again reveal a card to determine which side you start on over here, as well as the bonus for the round. In this case, the bonus would be that medium roast. The bonuses might change, it might not. It all depends on the flip of the card, which then goes back in the deck, and you shuffle and divvy out. So, that should give you an idea of how the game works. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I thought of this trick-taking game. All right, so there it is. Let's talk about it. I'm going to use my target audience system here to go over some talking points. I'll start off with thematic ties. I like this theme. I, I think it's original. I think it's outside the box. The idea of... Uh, you know, blending different cups of coffee and, and testing their uh, potency and figuring out what the best cup of coffee is. It's cool. It's different. It's clever. It's a little hipster, maybe, but I enjoy it, and I think it's um, it, it does not repeat some of the same old themes that we've come to expect. So, thumbs up there. Aesthetics are, for the most part, very nice. I like the quality of the cards very much. The graphic design in this game sort of matches the Saashi and Saashi look from their, from their other games, and I think it's great. I'm, I'm sure some people don't like this look, and again, as I've always said, aesthetics for me is always the most, uh, you know, make up your own mind sort of uh, uh, target uh, letter. But in this case, I really enjoy it. I think it's got a good look, and the only thing I have a small issue with is the fact that uh, the red cards have on them the cup the piece of the cup, the sliver of cup, for two or four players, and then half a cup for three players. That's fine. I, I get why they would do that. It would be slightly harder to include 10 extra cards in uh, red that had just a half cup and 10 cards that had just the quarter cup. I wish I had those, to be honest, because I think it would make teaching the game a little bit easier. There's always that. that this is the only thing in the whole game, really, that sometimes I have to tell people... You know, if I'm playing with three, I'm playing with four. Just you use that sliver only. You know, you don't need the half cup. It says it right there. It says three players 
and it says two, four players. But it's still a little thing I have to make sure I mention, and sometimes folks, you know, have a hard time putting it together. Like, oh, wait, yeah, flip this around, put it over here. But otherwise, nicely done. Very nicely done. I really like the scoring pad in this as well, too. It's got a, it's got a good look as well. The replayability is very nice. It's high. The game is short enough that uh, it is very replayable. A lot of trick-taking games sometimes outstay their welcome. I'll talk about that in game length. Um, and um, three rounds feels correct. And then scoring your best cup from any of the three rounds, I also think is very, very cool and very interesting. And so replayability here is high. And the discoverability, how much you, how you discover what's a good move, what's not a good move, uh, from game to game is is deceptively deep. It's it's got quite a bit going on. Uh, game length, as I said, three rounds feels correct for this. There's other trick taking games out there that make you play to a certain point level, like th play to 300 points. Well, that could be quite a few hands. And yes, you can adjust that, but I could do that with any game. You know, I expect the publisher and the designers to tell me how to play the game the best way possible. That's that's what they do. And uh, so some games tell you a certain number of hands. Sometimes it's, you know, seven hands, ten hands. Those can certainly outstay their welcome. This one, though, nails it. Three rounds is right on point. The ease of play here is, for the most part, very high. It's going to take maybe a couple of goes to, uh, you know, a couple of hands for you to understand uh, that there's these two stages of playing cards not following suit which is a little tricky. Some trick-taking games do it. There's others that do it, but uh, it's still sort of counterintuitive a little bit. And then this idea of after you've played the cards, you can take back any of the cards and then start building your cups of coffee. It gets points for originality, you know. It gets a little ding for ease of play from it, but I think the originality that comes with the way this works makes up for it, more than makes up for it. And then lastly, tactics and strategy, luck, things like that. I love the idea that high cards are good sometimes, low cards are good sometimes. Yes, the worst, the worst cards are usually in the middle, but you know that going in, and it does make your hand of cards better than usual trick-taking games that say, well, high cards are good no matter what. So if you were dealt a bad hand, as in a low hand, that's just worse than someone else who got luckier up front. In this one, manipulating what you play when you play it is feels like you have more control and is more paramount than a lot of other trick-taking games. You don't have to follow suit. So if you are the second player, you have way more cards you can play as opposed to in most trick-taking games, where if I play red, you play red. Well, this one, if I play red, you play anything else except red. That's usually more cards. And later on in the round, when someone is short-suited, meaning they no longer have you know, a card that they can legally play. Well, you can play anything at that point, and color won't matter anyway. So you're just going for, you know, high cards or low cards. So the tactics here are nice. There's also the idea of if I did really well in this cup, you know, the light roast, in the first round, I don't have to worry about that one. If I got 70 points, you know, well, I'm probably not going to get more than 70 points for that cup. So I'm going to not worry about those and try to go for the other cups of coffee, you know? There's one other thing I did not mention in my overview, and that is if you get, you know, if I have a, a light roast blue card in my cup already, and then later I get another one, it covers up the old one. So that's a good way to, sometimes you want to avoid taking those because it's gonna break up your set, you know, three fives or whatever, or three twos. And sometimes you do want it because it covers up the old card, boom, you're now getting a bonus. So that's, that's neat as well. I think the tactics here are rich. I think they are developing tactics. I think from game to game to game, you're going to find more and more things to enjoy about it. It's a tricky game to teach overall. It's a, a quirky game, certainly, but it's a very good game. It's a fun, trick-taking game that does not feel... It does not have a feeling of been there, done that, you know? Again, there are things here that we've seen in other trick-taking games but they're packaged and they are, you know, they've been percolated, if you'll excuse the pun, in a very clever and engaging way. So this one's going to get a seal of approval from me. I enjoy it. I'm going to be hanging on to it. And I would say if you like trick-taking games, especially some that have a little something different, 
then this is one to look into and get yourself a copy of. So there you go, Blend Coffee Lab. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.